So I'm guessing you've probably been to a supermarket or a grocery store once in your life to pick up some eggs or milk or some other common item that you might find at the grocery store. And of course those items are inventory because that is what they sell. And in this tutorial we're going to be covering how to actually expense inventory using the FIFO method. So first off, what is FIFO? What is this acronym here at the top? Well it stands for first in, first out. And what that basically means is, let's say, let's say we're a, a supermarket and we're selling milk and this is our, our first purchase of this first or I should say it's our first order of milk that we've purchased and we purchased on September the 1st September the 1st and then we made another purchase which is going to be on September the 30th if we sell some milk which inventory are we going are we going to expense first? Well, it all depends on which came in first. Because the first inventory that comes in is the first inventory that is going to go out or the first inventory that is going to be expensed. These terms are interchangeable. So it's going to be our September 1st inventory because of course this is our most dated or our oldest inventory. And of course, we uh, do this for the FIFO method. It's different depending on which method you use. But since we are using the FIFO method, our September 1st uh, purchase is going to be expensed first when we sell any milk. And there's one thing I wanted to note just before uh, we actually get into a problem. And that is that when we use the FIFO method, it's going to yield the same cost of goods sold and ending inventory whether you use the perpetual or the periodic inventory system and what i mean by this is if we use uh if we try to find the cost of goods sold it's going to be the same under the perpetual and periodic inventory system and if we try to find the ending inventory it's going to be the same under the perpetual and periodic inventory system as well so just remember that, note it down. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because other, other cost flow assumptions like the, the average cost method, which we're gonna get into in the, the next tutorial, uh, these numbers will actually be different based on whether it's a perpetual or periodic system. So just, just note that down. And we're actually gonna be figuring out the cost of goods sold in any inventory using this problem. So let's get rid of these pictures and bring up this table where we actually have uh, numbers over here on the left. I'm actually gonna bring up this, this diagram or picture of uh, milk curtains as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're actually going to uh, subtract milk as we expense it. So over here on the left, we have dates from January the 1st to the 18th, beginning inventory, a purchase, a sale, a purchase, a sale, just like any normal business. Uh, we have the units that we had originally, then units we've purchased, units we've sold, units we've purchased, uh, their unit cost, how much we, uh, how much our original inventory is uh, valued at, how much the next purchase cost, $15 each, the next purchase cost 17 and the next 20, and we also have the respective sales price for our sales. And of course, the sales price is gonna be greater than the unit price. Uh, so that we can remain in business and actually generate a profit. So what is the question that goes along with this? Well, it's actually a statement. It says, find the cost of goods sold and ending inventory on January the 31st. So how are we going to go about solving this? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to create these two headers, purchases and sales. And we're going to figure out how much our inventory is worth first. So we look at the beginning inventory. 300 units at $10 each. I guess that this one isn't a purchase. This is just how much we had on hand. Uh, so our inventory right now is worth $3,000. Then we made our first purchase on the 2nd of January, 200 units at $15, which is going to be $3,000 more dollars of inventory. So our inventory is now valued at $6,000. Uh, we're going to disregard the sales entry for now and just look at the purchases. The next purchase is 100 units at $17, which is $1,700. And the final purchase entry, which is 300 times 20. 
which is six thousand dollars worth of inventory bringing us to a final amount of thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars and 900 units over on the left side so we know that 900 units are valued at a total of 13,700 so find cost of goods sold I should actually probably write that out so there's no confusion cost of goods sold how are we gonna figure that out well the way we're gonna figure this out is by looking at how many items we've sold so we've sold 250 and then 300 units and then we're going to figure out how much it costs for us to actually sell those units. So our first entry or our first sale entry is on the January the 8th, which is 300 units. What are we going to expense it at? Are we going to use $30 right here? Well, $30 would be the price of goods sold, but we need to find the cost of goods sold. So this is just the price of how much we sold it at. We need to find how much it cost us to sell it, the cost of our goods sold. So the cost using the FIFO method is going to be the first inventory. So we need to expense the first, we need to expense the first inventory uh, that we've purchased. So we need to expense the, the $10 stuff first. So we'll expense 300 units at $10 and then we'll have $3,000 of expense so far. So we've eliminated this first uh, bit of inventory and in doing so, we're going to get rid of that milk carton right here. And of course, the oldest milk is at the front while the newest is at the back and they just keep pushing. Uh, I, I guess if you've ever picked up milk, the, the oldest is at the front while the freshest is at the back. And of course, since we've eliminated uh, the first inventory that we've purchased, or since we've expensed that, that is the first one to go. The next sale is 250 units. 250 units. So in total, we've sold 550 units in the month of January. So we're gonna have 350 units left over. So we've got rid of 300 units. And now we need to get rid of another 250 or we need to expense another 250 units. Well, there's only 200 units uh, at the $15 price. So we can get rid of 200. So 200 at 15, which is going to be, I'm not sure how much that is going to be. 200 times 15, I think 3,000 as well, yeah. Um, $3,000 and then the remaining 50, we're going to have to get at the $17 level. So the minus 50 at 17, which will be 50 times 17, $850. So in total, our cost of goods sold will be 3,000 plus 3,000 plus 850 or $6,850. So that's our cost of goods sold because we've sold 550 units and we've expensed 550 units which have basically cost us $6,850. Uh, and I guess we can also take the second milk carton out since we expensed the second level there and we've expensed not all of the, the third purchase order but just half of it. So there are still 350 units left over like I said there would be so this is our cost of goods sold number. And our ending inventory, how we're gonna get this, is by taking our total inventory value and then subtracting the cost of goods sold. So 13,700 minus 6,850 will be 6,850. So it just somehow worked out to be uh, the same ending inventory and cost of goods sold. And you can, of course, also double check your work by just looking at the the remaining units. So we have 300 at uh, 300 units at $20, which is $6,000 worth of in inventory. And we have 50 units left at the $17 price range, which is 850 
and then our ending inventory is 6850 so you can check it that way as well regardless we found our ending inventory and our cost of goods sold so that's basically the FIFO method uh, make sure that you always expense the most historical or dated inventory first and make sure when you're actually figuring out your cost of goods sold number that you use the unit costs and not the sales costs. The sales price are only for the revenue entries which you'll see later on in the videos. Hopefully this helped. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.